So everything that we are experiencing right now, everybody say everything. Everything that we are experiencing right now is preparing the stage for what is to come. And here's what we have to understand. We cannot be ignorant about the times that we are living in. Now, ignorance is not a bad word. Ignorant just simply means to have a lack of understanding or a lack of, of knowledge. Now, someone can make it mean you're, you're ignorant, right? But that's not what we're referring to. Ignorance is simply a lack of understanding or a lack of knowledge. So we don't want to be ignorant about the times that we are living in, but instead we want to know what God's Word says. So how can you and I, how can we understand what God's Word says? Well, step number one, pick it up. (laughs) Right? Come on. That's the first level right there. Pick it up. Step number two, open it up. Oh, there's words in here. And three, read it. Some people say, well, Pastor, can't you just tell me what it says? Well, that would be being lazy, right? But also, not everybody that stands in a pulpit speaks truth. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't ever take my word for something because you like the way I dress. And it's very snazzy, by the way. Don't, don't ever just take someone's word because you've heard that name or they have, they, they have a website or something like that. Everything that is said must line up with this. We're going to see that here in just a second. It's got to line up with this. That's how you know what God's Word says, right? It's in there that, in this Word, that you're going to find everything, and there's that Word again, everybody say everything. You're going to find everything you need to live a godly life and that is free from fear in the coming days. Are you with me? Say, "Uh uh-huh. So today, we're going to talk about some end-time events, and uh, I, I want to give you four, four of these points as well, but four of them, four end-time events that I really want us to look at. Number one is this, great deception is already here, and there's more to come. Great deception is already here. And there's going to be more to come. So I want you to grab your copy of God's Word. And I strongly encourage you. I get it that this is great. I use this all the time. But listen, nothing is going to beat a good old-fashioned copy of God's Word right here. I was given this from uh, one of my, my pastors in 1996. This was my ordination Bible. It's that old school, I don't even know if they make it anymore, it's Thompson Chain Reference. How many know what I'm talking about? Come on, somebody. Thompson, this, is, this, this thing has been around the world, and it's been marked up and written up and marked over. And can I just I, I tell you, if you want to know God's Word, you got to read God's Word. And you're not going to just wake up tomorrow morning because you put it underneath your pillow And then through osmosis, it's going to get into your melon, right? You've got to pick it up and you've got to study it and you've got to read it. So number one, the first thing that we're going to talk about under end time events is number one, great, the great depression or or depression, good grief, great deception is already here, but there's more to come. 
So turn to 2 Thessalonians. We're really going to be focusing right out of here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to do some jumping around today, but I promise you, you'll be able to stick with me. Okay? So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. This particular passage, I'm going to start out reading in the New King James Version. And then uh, in point two, I'm going to flip some things and you're going to see what it has to say in the New Living Translation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1, it says this. Now brethren, that's talking about us. Brethren, the church, people who are saved. Concerning the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. This is a reference of the rapture of the church, okay? Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering to him, we ask you, verse 2, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by even a letter, an email, a chain letter, a text. If you don't type amen, the fleas of a thousand camels are going to infest your armpits. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled by any of this as if it were from us. As though the day of Christ has already come. And then it says this in verse 3a. Let no one deceive you by any means. Don't be deceived. Now, we've spoken about this before, but nearly everything, and there's that word again. Everybody say everything. Nearly everything consumed that is coming from the national media is now being controlled by the prince of the power of of the air. Now come on, who is the prince of the power of the air? Satan, the devil, the dude downstairs. That's who we're talking about. Nearly everything is being controlled by the prince of the, the power of the air. And right now, the world as we know it is being programmed. Everybody say programmed. And if we as believers are not careful, we will find ourselves being led by a spirit of fear instead of being led by the Holy Spirit. How many know what I'm talking about? How many can attest that there has been this spirit of fear and even that a fear, a little bit of anxiety has even come across your path and you had to say, uh, no way, Jose, Satan, get out of here. And you kicked him out the door. Absolutely. That goes for everybody. We should not live by a spirit of fear. God's not given us that. But what has God given us? Uh, he's given us a sound mind. He's given us a sound mind. And so we should not live in fear. And even now, many prophecies and dreams and revelations that are revelation that are being promoted right now, and you can watch them on Facebook and YouTube. A lot of these prophecies and dreams, uh, they're laced with fear, and it's shaken many believers to the core. But what did the scripture just say? Don't be easily shaken or alarmed. Don't be easily shaken or alarmed. We have to understand that there is no prophecy, there will be no dream, there will be no revelation that comes from God that will contradict God's word. And how can we know whether or not it's true? By knowing God's word. Look at it in 2 John chapter 1, verse 7 through 10. Everything we need, guys. Hear me. Everything we need to live this life. And we have a great life. We live in the greatest nation in the world. 
We have problems. But listen, I've been around the world, and many of you have been around the world too. There ain't no place like home, Toto. We live in the greatest land, and we are blessed by God. But look at what it, the Word tells us in 2 John chapter 1. Many deceivers, remember, don't be deceived. Many deceivers have gone in out into the world, and they deny that Jesus Christ came in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver and is an antichrist. And then it says this, watch out. Everybody say, watch out. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. Be diligent so that you receive your full reward. What's our full reward? Heaven. We will receive our full reward. Verse 9, anyone who wanders away from this teaching has no relationship. I'm not saying this. This is God's word right here. Anyone who wanders away from this teaching has no relationship with God, but anyone who remains in the teaching of Christ has a relationship with both the Father and the Son. Then it gets a little bit more prickly. If anyone comes to your meeting who does not teach the truth about Christ, This is what gets crazy. Don't invite that person into your home or give any kind of encouragement. The world would say, well, that's rude. This is what God's word says right here. And then it says this, anyone who encourages those kind of people that don't preach the truth becomes a partner in their evil work. Is that not scary? We've got to be very, very careful that we're not partnering with evil works. So how can we know what is from the Lord and what is not? Well, we see that we are needing the gift of discernment. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 12. There's nine different manifestations of the Spirit. You can look that up later. And it says this, that there's wisdom, there's knowledge, there's faith, there's healing, there's miraculous powers, there's prophecy, there's discernment, right? There's tongues and there's interpretation of tongues. All of those different gifts, and I want you to hear me, all of those different gifts that are right there are within the body of They're working within the body of Christ, and they're working within you. Sometimes they come to the surface, and you function in them, but you don't, nobody, I'm sorry, but no one has a full uh, tool belt of all these, and they can use them at will. It's as the Spirit enables them to do so, right? And so we need that gift of discernment right now because there's great deception in the land, We know from 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11, that God, all of these gifts that we just spoke about, they're of the one and the same Spirit, and God gives and distributes to them each one just as he determines. Now, this gift of discernment, here's what it means. It's a Greek word. The Greek word, you can look it up for yourself, 1253 in the Strong's Concordance, you can see it. The word is diacrisis, diacrisis. This word discernment means this, judicial estimation, being able to judge, being able to weigh things out, which one is correct, which one is incorrect, which one has a mixture. How many know there's a lot of things in this world that has a mixture? We've got to be able to use discernment that comes from the Holy Spirit. Some people will say, that they will use words like this, man, I've just got this thing in my gut. i got a gut feeling. Some people will say, you know what, I, 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 I've got a red flag on that. How many of you have ever used that, a red flag? What are we coming with, a red flag? Right? 
I've got a red flag about that. or something. Listen, if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit is living in you, and he's going to be the one that says, mm, uh, I get the mm all the time. John chapter 8, verse 31b, it says this. It, Jesus said this, if you hold on to my teaching, you really are my disciples. And once you're my, my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will what? Set you free. You see, federal agents, listen to me, federal agents don't learn to spot counterfeit money by studying the counterfeits. Unfortunately, we're doing that all the time. We're studying out the counterfeits. We're studying out the conspiracies. We're studying out all these different things. Federal agents don't learn to spot counterfeit money by studying the counterfeits. They study the genuine bills until they master the look of the real thing. And then when they see the bogus money, the funny money, they recognize it. How can you and I learn to recognize it. Well, here's a good way. Growth Track on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock online is a great way to learn how to grow in the things of God, how to study the real thing. Small groups, there's coming up. I hope you get involved in a small group, even at the very least online small group. We have to know why. Why is it so important that we know? Because great deception is already here and there's going to be more to come. You do not want to be deceived. How many of that's one of your gifts? Oh, I love being deceived. No one. No one wants to be deceived. The problem is this. If you are deceived, you don't know it. If you're deceived, you don't know that you're deceived. And in these end times, great deception is already here, but there's more to come. Number two, end time events. The stage is being set for the Antichrist. Right now, the stage is being set for the Antichrist. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's all right here, guys. This is not rocket science. This is, isn't something that, that I got taught. This is all in God's word. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3b. Remember, this is a continuation of what we just read. And what we just read was this. Let no one deceive you by any means. And then it goes on with this. For that day will not come when it's speaking about that day. We're speaking about the return of Jesus Christ. That day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Think about this. I didn't even say this last service. Think about this. With all the COVID thing that they're going to, there's a vast majority of the church that is not returning. Now, I'm not saying that people are falling away from Christ because there are legitimate cases and concerns because of the virus. I get that. We've got pastor friends, we've got family members right now that are even personal family members right now that are, that are struggling with this, and I believe they're going to get through in the name of Jesus. But there's many that they fall off and they don't come back in. I find that interesting. That's, that's a little Scooby snack you can chew on and think about that later, right? But that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. Everybody say, the man of sin. And then it goes on to call this man of sin, it goes on to call him the son of perdition. Who are, who's this referring to? Referring to the Antichrist, right? Right? Just as God the Father has Jesus, the son of the living God, there will always be a counterfeit. 
Satan himself, he'll have his boy. He is the Antichrist. Think about it. Think about it, how it's, how it's going to play out. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. And what does he do? He opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That'll be some crazy times, will it not be? Now jump down to verse 9. Here's what he's going to do. Verse 9, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. It says this, This man will come to do the work of Satan himself with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. That's what the Antichrist will do. He will use, verse 10, he will use every kind of evil deception. Here, what I'm saying here, here's what we're reading. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those who are on their way to destruction. That doesn't mean that he's going to fool the children of God. He is going to fool those who do not have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what he wants to do, to steal, kill, and destroy. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. In other words, they've refused Jesus Christ. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived. That doesn't mean that God is doing it. That just means that God is stepping out of the way and he said, you won't receive me. Okay, do what you got to do. That's what it's saying right here. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. And they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing evil the truth. That's what the Antichrist will do. Are you with me? Did I Have I lost anybody yet? Okay, if I have, I'm sorry. Now here's what I'm going to do. We're going to go back and read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3b through 4, but I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. I believe it's on the screen. Look at what it says here. For that day, in other words, the return of Jesus Christ, will not come until there is a great rebellion against God, and here it is, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. So there's just a few words, there's three words I want to pull out of this. I want to, we're going to look at the word rebellion. We're going to look at the word lawlessness, and we're going to look at the word destruction. Now look at this. Rebellion. What is rebellion? Right? I'm a rebel without a cause. Uh, Pee Wee Herman said that, right? And so I'm a rebel without a cause. No, that's not what we're talking about. Rebellion in this form is as the same as witchcraft. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Daryl? That's a little bit steep. Because God's Word says, right? Are you tracking with me? God's Word tells us this in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the same as witchcraft. Have you found it Interesting that there is a heightened level of witchcraft and sorcery and things like that that is being presented online, Hulu, Netflix, online television, ABC, CBS, NBC, everything is all about witchcraft. They're glorifying it with the American flag behind them. All about the Salem witch trials. All about all these different things. Isn't it interesting that as we're talking about the last days, 
for that day, the return of Christ will not come until there is a great rebellion, until there is great witchcraft, unless there is great falling away. I find it interesting that God's Word pulls that out. The second word I want us to look at is the word lawlessness. Have you noticed that these new groups that have formed within the last few years, the really underlying portion of what they stand for and what they are desiring to do, it's all about abolishing the law and defunding the police. Come on now. I I just saw a few light bulbs go on. And remember, if the light's not on, nobody's home, right? The, The light bulbs are coming on. Listen, this is what God's Word says. The man of lawlessness, which is described at the Antichrist. Remember, it's just setting the stage for everything. Sitting the stage. And so here you have it. We've got people, we've got cities that are literally voting to defund the police. And listen, there are bad cops in this world. Guess what? There are bad preachers too. There are bad plumbers. There's bad school teachers. There are bad salesmen. But that doesn't mean they're all bad. Right? And so here we have all of this. Defund, remove, get rid of it. We will have nothing more to do with it. We want it out. We have to realize, and don't be deceived, friends. It's a time to realize that this agenda that we're going through right now is actually a satanic plan that's setting itself up for the Antichrist. Setting the stage. The man of lawlessness. And its whole objective is to prepare everything and everyone for the Antichrist. And even this, many believers are getting swept up in this deception, in these marches, and all of these different things. They're getting swept up and are actually participating in the plan to reveal The Antichrist. Listen, this is not a political statement. This is a biblical statement right here, right in front of our eyes. For me, we've got to love every person, every man, woman, every child, love them to life. No matter the color of their skin or where you sit on which side of the tracks, it doesn't matter. You love people to life. Why? Because Jesus came to die for all. So that lawlessness, rebellion, lawlessness, and look at this, destruction. The one, that man who brings destruction. Have you seen the cities? Where all of this is taking place, remember, the media is controlled by the prince of the power of the air. You're just being shown what they want you to see. No one sees the litter, the mass destruction. The, the, you see a little bit of the burning, but it's all in the form of social justice and, and reforming and re- changing everything back up. Here's what we've got to understand. It all is about destruction. Why? Because the man of destruction is getting ready to be revealed. So when everything is burning to the ground, the man of lawlessness, look at it, the man of lawlessness will come in, moonwalk in on, right? He'll moonwalk right into the scene and he will say, oh, I can fix all of this. Watch this miracle. Watch this take place. See it? It's setting the stage for the man of lawlessness. So he is the one in control. I am God. Worship me. Oh, do you see it? It's right there, right in front of us. But 1 Peter chapter 5, it tells us this. Stay alert 
and watch out for your great enemy, the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And then it says this, stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through this same kind of suffering that you're going through. Go, Everybody's on the same page. I don't care who you are. Everybody's on the same page. Get it? Good. End time event number two, the stage is being set for the Antichrist. Number three, though, look at it. The third end time event, here's what we've got to understand of this. The Holy Spirit is still in control. He's still in control. Look at it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's all right here. We're going to pick up verses 5, 6, and 7. And I want you to track with me. Look at it. Do you not remember... That when I was still with you, remember, he was with uh, the church of Thessalonica. When I was still with you, I told you about all these things. Great deception, all these things are going to take place. And now, and here it is. And now, you know what is restraining, holding back. Now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness, there it is again, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now look at this. We have to understand this right now. Jesus ascended into heaven. He said, I must go. I must leave. And when I do that, I am going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to be here, and he is going to bring conviction of sin and of righteousness, right? You're going to be empowered by this Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at this. The very moment you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes, bam, and now you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. How do you know that, Pastor? It's in the Word. That's how we know. Don't be ignorant of these things. So here we are. The Holy Spirit is within us. And the Holy Spirit is holding back. When we come together, let me tell you, there's no force of evil that can stand. We have no rival. You've got no evil. Now and forever you reign. But look at it right here. What does it say? For the mystery of lawlessness, is that still on the screen? Put that, put that verse back up, would you please? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now what does that mean? Think about this. Where does the Holy Spirit reside? In us. Is there anywhere in Scripture that says that the Holy Spirit is going to leave us? He's going to be with us to the very end of the age. So the only thing that that can mean right there, if the Holy Spirit is living in us, is that not giving reference to the rapture of the church? The restrainer, he can do nothing. The Antichrist, the enemy can do nothing until the restrainer is gone. And you, the church, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I, I, hey, that's pretty incredible if you ask me. You see, the Holy Spirit, he is the restrainer. So what that means is this, God has the last say-so. 
He has the last say so. Don't be deceived in thinking that the enemy is in control during this time. Don't be fearful and doubt and worry and run around like chicken little thinking the sky is falling. We are living in the greatest days of the entire history where we can be able to see that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords is coming back for his people. You see, if we will keep his presence, our purpose, we're going to receive victory. We'll receive victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Matthew chapter 24, verse 30 and 31. Then at last, then the sign that this, this is the sign that the Son of Man is coming and will appear in the heavens and there will be deep mourning among the peoples of all the earth. No, it's not talking about there's going to be deep mourning in the church. The church is going to be rejoicing because they're going to be singing the rapture song. But the entire earth will be in deep mourning of all the peoples of this earth and they will see the Son of Man coming and appearing in the clouds of heaven with great power and with great thwart, uh, glory. And he will send out his angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world from the farthest ends of the earth and of heaven. It's right there in God's word. But listen, we're not done with this yet. I'm laying in the plane. This is point four. Because someone is very hungry and they need to eat. Right? In time events. What have we been talking about? Let's go over this again just real quick. Great deception is already here. And there's more to come. The stage right now is being set for the Antichrist. The third one, the Holy Spirit still in control. Right? And then finally, this is so powerful, we have the victory. We've got the victory. Look at it, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in verse 8. What does it say? Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but, everybody say but, but the Lord Jesus will kill him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. You see, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 tells this, but thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. When his name is written on your heart, when he wins, you win. And can I tell you, Jesus always wins. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, for every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. We have victory in Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, but the one, but one of the 24 elders said to me, hey, stop it, stop crying, stop weeping, and look, there's the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne. He has won the victory. He is worthy to open up the scroll and its seven seals. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 2, I looked up and I saw a white horse standing there and its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head and he rode out to win many battles and gain the victory. You see, God has the last say. He's got victory. In this time and in this season that we're living in, we've got mortal men rising up and they really do not even understand and they cannot comprehend that they're playing right into the plan that will lead up to the Antichrist. People 
that have been voted in and established and put in high places are literally setting the stage for what is to come and they don't even know what they're doing. Why? Because they are deceived. They think in the, the, the landscape of all the world that they can come in and they can keep men and believers and women and children from coming in and singing in their churches out in California. They think that they can stop people because it's about stopping the spread. Friends, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Listen, you can't wage war on God and think that you're going to win. Did you know that last week alone, 11,000 lightning bolts, 11,000 lightning bolts hit the state of California, igniting hundreds of fires, 367 fires to be exact. I say it again. You cannot wage war on God and his people and think that you're going to get away with it. It's time for all of God's people in California to rise up and give a shout of praise. It's time for all the people in Ohio, in Indiana, in Michigan, in Kentucky, in Florida, in, in Nebraska, and in Iowa to rise up and stand up and declare that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And there's nothing that's going to keep my mouth shut over this entire thing. We've got to rise up. We have to stand firm. You don't need to be a jerk about it, but rise up and stand firm and be the child of God that he's called you to be, using every opportunity to rob hell and to populate heaven. Amen? Amen.